How's it going everyone? Chris here with Simply Knock, and today I'm here to talk about the future of edge computing. Now I'm sure you've all already watched our video with scale computing, and if you haven't, you can click the link right up there and you can watch it right now. Don't worry, I'll wait. Okay, that's long enough. So I'm bringing in Aaron Rossell, our president, to help me talk about where these computers at the edge are headed and what Simply Knock is doing to make that happen. So without further ado, Aaron Rossell. Welcome, Aaron. Glad to have you here to talk about all things edge computing. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Yeah, always, always happy to have you in the studio. So my first question is going to be, what do you see as being the biggest development in edge computing in the near future? I would say the shift from all things in the cloud to a whole lot more at the edge where the action is actually happening. So you're seeing it moving away from being that centralized location to decentralized, on-premise. These are the terms we're hearing with our customers and, and the movement that we're kind of seeing where there's so much more going on at the edge now, especially with AI. Um, there's more and more that, that our customers are trying to do, you know, real time. The cloud is expensive, right? It's yeah. expensive to push all that data up. It, there's a lot of bandwidth that's needed. Storage in the cloud is expensive. So a lot more of that's going to be moving to the edge um, or the extreme edge. Plus there's a little bit of a, I'm guessing, a time issue because you have to send the things there, process yes. it, and then it goes back to where it needs to be exactly. as opposed to everything just happening there. Right. If you need real-time answers, if it's mission critical, if it's you know endangering someone, if you don't get a, a response back quickly, you, know, you need that information then, you need it right then, um, or bad things happen. To follow on to that question then, why is it so important for businesses to leverage AI at the edge? Uh, well, AI is going to do a lot that uh, you know an employee couldn't do or a person couldn't do. You know, leveraging the power of the compute that we can put out at the edge today is allowing businesses to do so much more than they, they've ever been able to do in the past. You know, real-time tracking of customer experiences, feeding that data back, you know, instantly to to headquarters or wherever you need it, or the specific information, the most important information, and leaving the rest of the unimportant information out at the edge mm -hmm. and not paying to move that data around. From my perspective, it's not big swings that we're looking at. It's just small incremental things that you can do that add up over time, right? Right, yeah. And, and there's so many people out there creating apps, developing models that are going to help with so many different aspects of efficiencies in every industry that you can think of. I'm foreseeing a future where it's just, everything's just so efficient that there's it's almost seamless whenever you're doing anything. Yeah, that's that's kind of the exciting thing about edge computing, I think, and about AI and the performance increases that we're seeing with all these newer chips and these neural processing units and these models that have been refined and refined and refined. Um, AI is just getting so good at certain specific tasks. Well-oiled machine is kind of the thought that comes to mind, right? Like yeah. just, you go to a Chick-fil-A, for example, and it just seems like a well-oiled machine but you know, multiply that times 10, right? Yeah. Where you show up and they're handing you your bag of food as you get there because they already knew that you were coming and they knew what you like to eat. They knew how many steps it was from the door to the right. counter. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just crazy efficiencies. Like what are we gonna do with all that extra time? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we, none of us will have to work. Now I've done videos in the past where I interviewed people, one of our partners, Scale Computing, mm -hmm. and we talked about edge computing in that video, but is simply not doing anything to get us deeper into that edge computing world. Yeah, absolutely. Listening to our customers over the years, there's kind of been a, a theme emerging that we've found. And so we've actually developed a whole new product category, we feel like, around these requests from our customers to allow a Nook-like device that has server-like features or server-like manageability at the edge mm -hmm but in a very small form factor that's designed kind of to be right-sized for the application that's being run or the applications, the containers, whatever it is that they're running at the edge. These devices are designed to do that, but with the feature set of a server, but not the same bulky power consumption, you know, overkill boxes that we've been using in the past. Yeah, and certainly they're gonna be a lot cheaper just because like servers can cost a server can cost thirty thousand, fifty thousand dollars, and yeah. I'm assuming that's not what we're going to be. No, no. So yeah, our our goal with the extreme edge servers is to provide, like I said, that right size device that does exactly what you need it to do, that's energy efficient, that you know helps you with your green initiatives as a corporation, um, is is a mu 
much less material that goes into a landfill when you're done with it. Mm -hmm. um, significantly multiple times less power consumption or power usage. And that's one of the challenges that we're seeing with all this AI. You know, these models take a lot of energy to run. They don't take as much en energy to to inference at the edge. So mm -hmm. um, why, why you know, spend three to 500 watts of power to run something that you could run at 30 or 40 watts? It's almost, in my mind, it's almost the same as switching from incandescent light bulbs to LED. Because now everything's yeah. LED, you can get the same amount of light yeah. with a lot less power. Yep, and maybe with the slight difference that had the LEDs been a lot less expensive in the beginning, mm -hmm. people probably would have adopted them a lot quicker, but they were actually more expensive. So yeah. there's this is kind of flip of that where our devices are in some cases multiple times less expensive to run a server at the edge versus the traditional um, historical way of doing it. And you said our customers are asking for certain server-like features. What are some of those features that they're asking for? We've invented um, some technology to make this happen. And so we have a nano, what we call a nano BMC, mm -hmm. and that's going to be your baseboard management controller. So basically going to give you an access port into the device similar to a server that would allow you the manageability features, updating a BIOS. If something goes wrong with it, you can get into it from anywhere in the world, check on it re-image it, put a different operating system on it, run a different AI model on it without sending a truck out to the restaurant and mm -hmm. having someone install something. It's a, a new model of, of serviceability for these types of devices. And that's all centered around the BMC? Right, centered okay. around that dedicated port for management and control of the box itself. So then you can centralize the management while still having all the computing power out wherever it needs to be? Yep, and without rolling trucks every time something goes down, mm -hmm. You know, you can send a reset command to the box, have it reboot. That, we, as we all know, fixes about 95% of the problem. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, all that can be done remotely without what they say, rolling a truck, which costs a lot of money. And obviously, talking with our customers, we've come up with a solution that's space efficient, cost efficient. Power efficient. Power efficient. That's, these are all obvious points for why people would want it, but why do you feel like this could be the next or is the next step in edge computing? Mainly because, you know, the, like I said, the customers have been asking for it. You know, we had one customer that said, hey, we love the Nooks. We love deploying them in, in lots of different ways, but what would be kind of the holy grail is if we could manage them the same way we manage our servers that are out in the field. Yeah. And that was kind of the spark that said, hey, well, we could. We're going to have to invent a couple of things, but yeah, we'll make it happen for you. I know it's not necessarily intuitive to know what BMC is, but when you explain it that way, that it centralizes the maintenance of it, basically. Right. That, to me, does sound revolutionary. Yeah. It's the sounds... other terms you'll hear is IPMI or sideband management. Mm -hmm. It's all done through that, you know, that dedicated port that's used for you to get access to the device and solve most of the problems that you're, that you're going to have with it. Recently, I've interviewed some people about this, but technology fails. It's just, Everybody it just knows. happens. Yep. And give it, give it long enough yeah. and give it uh, the right environment and it'll, it'll fail eventually. But now it's, it's the idea that it takes like an extreme amount of failure before you have to like send right. someone out to it. Knowing what it is before you go is yeah, that's huge. A huge time and just turning saving. it off and turning it back on if that's not going to work. Yeah, those five percent of problems that actually <laughs> require a person to be present. Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for coming on. I sure. this was a great conversation. Yeah, it's very enlightening. Appreciate so, you having me. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in and look out for our new BMC Extreme Edge servers coming out soon.